hello everyone uh in this video we are going to discuss about the google cloud composure service which is there in the google cloud platform so from today onwards i'll be creating a new playlist for the google cloud composure and uh, whatever the videos i'm going to create for google cloud composure and so on or for use case i'm going to upload all those videos on that playlist so Today's video, we are going to see the introduction to the Google Cloud Composer and uh, what is the Google Cloud Composer. Also, we'll discuss about the architecture of the Google Cloud Composer. So, the Google Cloud Composer, the Cloud Composer, is a managed airflow service which is there uh, in the GCP in Google Cloud Platform. So, if you are using Airflow in your on premises. If you have done the setup of Airflow in the on premises, it's very difficult to do the setup on, on premises. But if you want to use the same Airflow service in Google Cloud, so we can create a cloud composure environment in Google Cloud platform. And then we can use the Airflow service in the Google Cloud. So Airflow is a uh, managed workflow. Uh, tool so it's it, the air it, it is used to manage the workflow and the air uh, the air, airflow will be having a, a DAG so the DAG uh, we mainly use the Python script to write the workflows in case of the DAG and DAG will be consisting of multiple tasks so uh, there will be task like there will be upstream and the downstream task so each of the tasks will be have, will be associated with one of the operator and uh, which we are going to see when you will create a DAG and we'll see what are the operators. So there are many operators which are there. So there are many predefined operator. So for example, there is Python operator, there is bash operator, there is Google cloud storage to BigQuery operator and then BigQuery to BigQuery operator. There are many predefined operator which are already available. We can use any of the predefined operator and we can pass the parameter to those predefined operator and we can use that. If uh, for, for some requirement, the predefined operator is not available, in that case, we can use the base operator and we can create our own custom operator. And that custom operator also we can uh, export to our DAG and we can use that custom operator in our DAG as well. So that also we can do. I mean, all the predefined operators are also originated from the base operator. So coming to the component that are there in case of the cloud composure. So as I told, the cloud composure is a managed airflow service and the component of the cloud composure are almost similar. So we have a uh, DAG directory. In case of the Google Cloud uh, platform, we are using the cloud storage as the DAG directory. And then we have the scheduler and the executor. So the scheduler or the executor is responsible uh, to, to submit your task to the DAG or to the worker node. And then the scheduler will also trigger your DAG as well. So uh, executor are the set of worker processes that are responsible for executing some of the tasks and the operator. Similarly, whenever your DAG is running, so the status of the DAG will be updated in a database. Uh, the metadata of the DAG and the status of the DAG will be updated in a metadata database. So for the metadata database, we are using the Cloud SQL. Cloud SQL instance we are, uh, we are using in case of the Google Cloud for the metadata database, as a metadata database in, uh, for the Cloud Composer. Similarly, for the web server, so the user can interact with the web UI or the Airflow web UI uh, through the web server and they can see the DAGs, they can see the status of those DAGs. So for that web server, we are, we are using the um, uh, uh, application engine on the application engine in case of the Google Cloud uh, platform. And uh, when you are going, I'll also show you how to create the Cloud Composure environment. But when you are going to create the cloud composure environment, there are two versions which are available right now. So there is the composure one and then there is composure two. 
So the main difference between the composure one and two is the auto scaling feature, which is there in case of composure two, but it's not there in case of composure one. Also, if you want to use the Airflow version two or two point X version, you have to use. Uh, you can use any of the version. Uh, Airflow one version is only available in case of the composure one, and also the pricing model are different for the each of this version. So. When you are going to create the composure one version, uh, the uh, use the composure one version. The it's going to create the resources the on the nodes, okay. But in case of the composure two, it's going to utilize the Kubernetes pod. So accordingly, the the GCP will charge you based on how many number of pods you are using. And in order to create the cloud composure environment. Uh, so these are the steps, these are the basic steps, which we, we are going to also follow. So let's go to the, uh, Google cloud console. So this is the console and here we can create the composer environment. As you can see, I have already created one, uh, environment, composer environment, but we can create the multiple environment as well. And to create a composer environment, it's going to take around 15 to 20 minutes. So you need to click on create and here you can see there are two options. One is the composure one and another one is the composure two. You can use any of these version. You can use composure one or composure two. I'm using composure one. So let's go to composure one. And here, uh, as I have mentioned, so we need to specify the basic information, which is the name of the environment, and then in which location we on we want to create the uh, this environment, so that we need to specify, and then which image version we want to use for this composure uh, environment. So these are the Airflow image version which are available. We can use any of this image version. And then this is the node count. So the airflow, whenever you are creating the composite environment, it's going to set up the resources, which I told the web server and the, uh, the database. So for all of those things, it's going to create, it's going to set up the resources on the Kubernetes cluster. Okay. So we can also see that on the GKE, on the Google Kubernetes engine, that the airflow composite environment is going to create or it's going to utilize the Kubernetes engine where it will be uh, creating all of the resources. So it's asking how many number of Kubernetes node you want to use. So you minimum, you need to put the three node. You cannot use less than three. So it's showing uh, minimum three nodes you will have to use. And then you can create the, uh, like you can select in which zone you want to create this composure environment you want to create this node. And for all of this node, you can also select the machine type, whether you want to use the N1 standard or N2 standard, which machine type you want to use for this node. So that also we can select, and then the disk size we can select. So for each of this node, uh, we can specify the, what is the disk size we want to use, minimum 30 GB and the default is 100 GB. If we don't specify anything because this is not mandatory field if we don't specify anything so default it's going to take uh size default size it's going to take us on the gb and then the service account uh which you want to use to create this composure environment i have used a compute engine default service account so you can use any of the service account and then the number of scheduler also we can specify. So how many number of uh, scheduler we want to use in this composure environment so that we can specify. So after I have put all the details on the slide. So after putting the node configuration, then the next step, we need to specify the network configuration. So if you'll expand this here, we need to use, you need to specify the network configuration. So mainly in case of production environment, we don't use the public IP address. So we need to set up the private IP address of VPC and then that VPC we can use here. But for now, for the demo purposes, so uh, we can use the public IP address and that is fine. Similarly, for the web server, for the web server, as I told, 
uh, whenever the user is going to interact with the web server. So for that way, and you can see the web server it is going to create in the application engine flexible instance, it's going to create the web server. So you can also specify what type of machine you want to create for the web server. And then we can specify the maintenance window. So when GCP can uh, uh, provide the maintenance for this composure environment, so we can also set up the window. It's not mandatory field, uh, but we can, if you want to say, if you want to uh, put any custom time, we can do that. And then there are airflow config override and the environment variable. So I'll talk about this the configuration override and the environment variable later. And then after that, we can click on create and it's going to take 10 to 15 minutes to create the environment. Okay. So once the environment is created, we can go inside the environment. And as soon as the environment is created, you can go to the Kubernetes cluster and you can see it has created the Kubernetes cluster for the composure environment. And if you go to the workloads, so here we can see uh, it has set up the init database. It has set up the airflow monitoring. It has set up the Redis instance. Uh, it has set up the scheduler, airflow scheduler, and airflow workload. So all of these resources are created on the Kubernetes. If you uh, if you want to explore more of uh, on the architecture of the cloud composure, so this is the official documentation where we can go and we can see what is the office or what is the doc, uh, architecture of the cloud composer so as you can see uh, there are two projects so it's going to create the custom customer project the project where i'm creating my uh the composer environment that is the customer project and the tenant project is the gcp project so on the GCP project, you can see it is going to create the cloud SQL databases where it will be updating the uh, the metadata of the uh, metadata of, of, of the DAG. Similarly, the web server also, the Airflow web server. Uh, so where I told like it's going to use the application engine uh, to, to set up the Airflow web server. And that Airflow web server also will be created on the T9 project. So since it is created outside of our project, which is the customer project, we will not be able to see these resources. Uh, but apart from that, as you can see, the Airflow worker, Airflow scheduler, which we already saw in the uh, Kubernetes cluster, and then the cloud storage. So all these resources, we, we, can, you, we can see it as a user. Okay, so if I go to the environment here, I can see the logs and I can see the DAG. So there is only one DAG, which is the airflow monitoring DAG. And then similarly, uh, this is the environment configuration which we selected while creating this environment. And then if you want to put any override, we can do that here. We can apply any kind of override, which we are going to see in the coming video. Similarly, the environment variable, if you want to use any environment variable and those environment variable also, we can export to our DAG and we can use those environment variable. So that also we are going to see in the coming videos. And any packages, if you want to add any Python packages, whether it is for Panda, Spark, any packages, if you want to add with the specific version. So those things also we can do here. And once the environment is created, uh, so how can we interact? So we need to use, as I told, there will be customer project, which will be our project, and then there will be tenant project, which will be the GCP project. So as a user, uh, we need to, uh, so whenever we are creating any DAG, so there will be a DAG folder or the uh, there will be GCS bucket, which will be by default created for the composure environment that we created. And 
in that this is bucket we can see there will be the DAG folder so from here you can see that is the DAG folder we can go to the DAG folder so inside that DAG folder we need to uh, to that DAG folder we need to copy our DAG to this DAG into this DAG folder and once the DAG is copied uh, we can see that DAG on the Airflow UI so we can view that uh, uh, we can we can view the web server the Airflow UI and in the UI we will be able to see our DAG and then whenever we want to trigger the DAG whether the DAG is manually triggered or uh, it is scheduled trigger so we can trigger the DAG from the UI itself and as I told the metadata of the DAG or the status of the DAG will be by default updated in the cloud SQL database and that cloud SQL database as I told it's created on the tenant project so we don't have access to the Tenant project to see the cloud SQL database. Okay. So uh, here, as you can see, this is the DAG folder, and I'm going to upload a sample DAG to this DAG folder. So let me see a sample DAG which I am going to upload. So let's this DAG. Um, this is the DAG which I am going to upload. Also, let me go to the Airflow web server. And it will take some time, one to two minutes for the DAG to appear on the UI. So you can see the DAG is already imported. So we can go ahead and we can run our DAG. So in this DAG, uh, so this is a simple DAG. And if we'll go to the code, we can see the code of this DAG. So this is a simple DAG, which is using just the dummy operator as you can see these are the predefined operator which i have export uh, imported there is dummy operator and then there is the python operator so there is a python function which is just going to print hello world and this function i am calling using the python operator these are the default argument which i am using for this DAG. and uh, so these are the parameters which i am passing to my DAG, and this is the task one and this is how we can define our task dependency. So the first task is task A, and then the next task is task B. So here I'm uh, calling, using the Python operator, I'm calling the function which I have created. And I can see the grid view, and also I can see the graph view of my DAG. So I'll go ahead and I will trigger the DAG. Once the DAG is triggered, so the DAG is succeeded. And if there is any issue on any of the tasks, we can go to, we can select that task and we can go to the logs. And we can see if there is any messages, any logs uh, in order to debug if there is any issue uh, happening on that particular task. Similarly, we can go to this task and we can go to the log and we can see if there is any issue which is happening and you can see it is printing hello world so uh, from that python function so this was just an introduction video and in the coming videos we are going to see some more use cases because the airflow uh, is a workflow management tool we can integrate with any of the other services like we can integrate with BigQuery, Cloud Storage, uh, we can integrate with the Data Pro. So we are going to see all those use cases. Okay. So that's all for this video. Thank you.